Hey there, welcome to another episode of Mondane Designs. I'm your host, Mondane. This video is part of my favorite series, and today we're going to be talking about my favorite GameCube games. The Nintendo GameCube was released in 2001 in the US, and it was one of my favorite systems that I picked up uh, for. Uh, the new and innovative ways that Nintendo decided to step outside of their comfort zone and uh, venture into the optical media. Now, albeit they did use uh, the miniature uh, GD ROMs or, or whatever you want to call them, uh, it was a little bit different than most people expected. Um, you know, now we're just going to go over a couple of my favorite games for this system. Uh, they are not presented in any particular order. So with that said, let's get on our way. So Bloody Roar Primal Fury was released in 2002 by Activision, or published by Activision. Um, I really enjoyed the Bloody Roar series. Uh, I've, I've loved all of the games. This game is actually a side story that happens between Bloody Roar 2 and 3, although a lot of the really good characters are still present. Um, the boss is actually uh, very, very difficult, uh, you know, depending on your play style. But, um, you know, I, I was still very happy with the, uh, with the cast of characters that were available, the responsiveness of the game. You know, it, it just, it did not miss the mark. It was definitely a Bloody War game, and it belongs in the franchise. It has definitely earned its spot. Uh, next is F-Zero GX, released 2003 by Nintendo and also by Sega. Um, you know, I've gone over this before in my driving, uh, my favorite driving's, uh, driving game <laughs> video, and uh, I'm just going to leave you guys with some more footage of gameplay and stuff like that. Um, you know, it's, it's just a good game and definitely worth your time. Next is Luigi's Mansion, released in 2001 by Nintendo. Uh, this is the first time that Nintendo allowed Luigi to actually have his own game, and they they did a really good job. Um, you know, they they developed his character a little bit, uh, showing that Luigi is um, you know a little bit courageous, but also you know timid and. And they just they did a great job. Uh, it's it's a comedic game, um, you know, just a, a very good kids style comedic spin on, uh, you know, the survival horror style games. You know, someone you should just always try to play this game. If you have a GameCube, you should have and own a copy of Luigi's Mansion. Um, uh, next is going to be two games of the same series, Fantasy Star Online Episode 1 and 2 and Episode 1 and 2 Plus. Um, see, 1 and 2 Plus was released in 2003 by Sega. Uh, it is my favorite version of the game just because uh, you get to play through Episode 1 and 2 and have a lot of the additional content. Um, you know, me and my friends played the heck out of these games all of the PSO series um, while we were in college and uh, it was a way for us even though we were you know in different parts of the state and sometimes different parts of the country where we could still get together uh, and play you know video games together at night um, you know just a lot of really fond memories uh, again good combat system uh, they did not miss anything from the Dreamcast version at all. Uh, they just did a wonderful job with this game. Uh, my final one to talk about is Star, Fo Star Fox Assault, released 2005 on Nintendo. Uh, I really like the Star Fox series. Um, I do not own a Wii U currently, so I can't make any judgment on uh, Star Fox uh, Zero, but um, I, I like Star Fox Assault. I liked uh, Star Fox 1. I, I like Star Fox 2. I like uh, Star Fox 64. You know, and Star Fox Assault was just another you know, good addition to the series where everything just fell into place for Nintendo. It's like they just created this really great framework and all they had to do is 
put the right pieces into the right part of the framework and just continue on going. Uh, the next thing to talk about is some of the GameCube, uh, or like when you want to purchase a GameCube. Uh, if you purchase a GameCube, uh, you definitely want to try to get as many of the accessories as possible. Um, some of the, the things that you want to try to look out for is with the uh, controllers, a lot of the analog sticks get worn out really fast. Um, and they just feel a little loose in your hand. Um, those are replaceable, but not without a little, little bit of soldering. Um, so if you're not afraid of that, you can pick up some you know, fairly roughly used controllers for cheap. Um, now, wave birds are another thing. Uh, you know, it's a wireless controller. They work really well. Uh, they still work with the Wii, uh, depending on which version of the Wii that you have. Um, you know, it's you know a, a good product, and uh, the only issue is that they don't have a rumble feature. Um, now, if you can get a hold of one of the keyboards, that was you know one of the key things that I definitely needed while playing Fantasy Star Online. Um, so, you know, if you're getting that game, then you definitely want a keyboard. Uh, you know, and, and there's just all kinds of other things. Um, I cannot suggest getting the uh, composite cables. Uh, they are way too expensive. You know, $300 current market value as of this video for a set of cables is ridiculous. Um, you know, as I can't justify it. Uh, I currently run an S-Video setup with mine. And it works out just fine, especially with my HDMI scaler that I'm using with it. Um, so, and, and those are fairly cheap and easy to find. Uh, currently, I think I, the last time I saw them was on Amazon for like nine bucks. Um, you know, so definitely try to find some controllers. Uh, some of the weird controllers are like the Donkey Konga uh, con uh, bongos, um, you know, the Samba, the Amigo, uh, Maraca controllers. You know, just, just weird things like that. Um, actually, I don't think the Maracas were on the GameCube. Uh, sorry about that. But, uh, you know, again, definitely try to pick up as many of the peripherals as you can. Um, some of the ones that I don't think were used to their fullest potential were like the, uh, the microphone. Um, I don't, I think there's like maybe two, maybe three games that are for it. Uh, so I wouldn't worry too much about that. Uh, you definitely want to pick up the AC adapter because uh, the aftermarket ones are really just not that good. Um, and just you know, make sure it's in good shape. Uh, Game Boy players are a dime a dozen, uh, but having the disc to actually operate the Game Boy player is actually kind of rare. Um, so. If you see one and it has the Game Boy Player, don't give them any extra money unless they actually have the disc as well, because the thing's pretty much useless without the disc. Um, like I said, the GameCube is one of my <clears throat> favorite systems, and you know it just has a huge library of games. Right now, pirating for that system is very difficult to do, so um, you should be able to purchase almost any of the games with full confidence that you are not purchasing a backup copy of the game. Well, that's it for this episode of Mundane Designs. I'm your host, Mundane, and I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I enjoyed making it. If you like what you see, you can support me and my channel on Patreon by clicking one of the links below. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a wonderful day.